what's up everybody welcome back to my channel i hope you all are having a good week and you're making smart moves and you're doing things that your future self is going to thank you for today i want to talk about uh consumer culture and debt and how the two are intertwined and how these very real things we deal with in life, um, how they can really set you back if you don't properly prepare yourself, if you're not aware, um, if you fall into the trap that so many people do fall into. Can't even say myself, I have not, um, you know, been a part of that at times. And I'm trying to plan for my future to make sure that I don't fall into it again as I learn, um, as I grow, and I wanna share that all with you. So um first going into consumer culture um, we all know that we live in this uh, consumer society where there's so much available to us on the market we're constantly being advertised to we're being sold to um, everywhere you go you in fact you don't even have to go anywhere like you don't even have to get up out of your bed you can be on your Instagram you know on your Facebook scrolling whatever you don't even have to be on social media um, the algorithms are so good that it's gonna pop up what you were searching for that you might want what you were talking about that you want might want sometimes it's like they can read your mind you know um you're like i haven't even talked about this i was thinking about it and then suddenly it's like here to remind you that oh this is that thing that you you said you wanted you were thinking about because i know you like better than you know yourself sometimes that's how it feels right and they make it so easy for you that a lot of the times you don't even have to get up out of your bed um if you're an online shopper because uh, they already have your card info saved in in the account so it's like shows you bam bam and it's already being sent to you before you even got up for your day so so many things like that you know we have there's all these fintech which i do support um you know paypal afterpay things things of that nature it can even just be your bank itself but everything's digitized and it's very convenient for the users to use um efficiently quick i guess that falls under the same category efficiency quickly you know convenience it's all just like bam bam right there so um and on top of that there are so many products that are available to us that are constantly being put out new things, the next hottest thing, and we all want it, right? So that's just something to be aware of is to not, is to try to be in control of your purchases. You know, we need to budget in life. We need to not be um, just sold, sold, sold off so easily. Um, because we do work hard for our money and a lot of people have the goal in life of accumulating wealth or being successful or living comfortably, which honestly, those mean different things to different people. But a lot of us have this goal in mind that these habits that we are um, creating for ourselves, even as like young people, you know, that's going to hold you back from ever really obtaining those goals, which are absolutely possible for you to, to um, achieve, uh, it, you know, if you start to learn to be a better consumer and have better spending habits. Um, so consumer culture, I also want to go into debt um, and credit cards. I mentioned Afterpay, which is, it's, it's all the same idea, right? You're financing something, you're using money that you don't actually have right now. Maybe you do have it um, using credit cards and financing, it's necessary, especially in America where we live, where you need to build a credit score so that you can get good interest rates later when you go to finance a car or a house or whatever else you're going to need to to um, acquire but we need to learn how to be uh, 
we need to learn how to manage this stuff or else you can really fall into a deep hole of being a consumer, using your credit card, using your afterpay and falling into this trap of debt um, that's so hard to get out of and it honestly can be so detrimental to your life and your future and again it can just hold you back. So I do think that we really need to get away from this idea of spending money that we don't actually have right now. Like this whole afterpay concept, I feel like it is more so targeted towards young people um, because, I don't know, I guess because most of us are, or most of, I'm young too, <laughs> we're, we're online, right? Um, and then the older generation, like they under, they have a better understanding of what these things mean. I'm gonna give an example. Um, so when I was like, this is before Afterpay, okay? A lot of it where we don't learn um, financial literacy, financial education, it's not something that's taught in school. We just go out into the world blindly and we're expected to learn it ourselves. Hopefully you have parents or you know some way of, of learning it. YouTube, if you're not using YouTube to learn these things, then it's a poor excuse at this point. Um, but even when I was 18, it wasn't as readily available. So I worked at Wells Fargo when I was 18 in the credit card department and I actually learned about uh, credit cards, the terms and conditions, annual percentage rate, and this is my cat cash, um, annual percentage rate, what balance transfers. I saw, you know, I saw people fall in the hole of debt and um, the compound effect of interest, which can also be very heavy on the user if they acquire like a high credit card balance and they have a high interest rate. It's just really hard to get out of. Anyways, back to my example. I was 18, maybe, yeah, I was probably 18 or 19, and I got, I went to Radio Shack, right? And I was getting subs in my car. And I, I guess I should have known, but I didn't. I didn't know um, that, you know, it was like 0% financing for 12 months, pay it back within 12 months, and there's no interest applied. Um, so I signed up for it. I got my subs and installed in my car. I paid way more than I probably even needed to to get that that done. I was happy when I left, you know, two weeks later, two, three weeks later, I'm at home and I get in the mail a credit card. And I just like did not understand that because they didn't sell it to me like that. Like they never mentioned a bank. They just, I thought I was just making a deal with Radio Shack. So. I get a credit card in the mail with this lim with this limit and I was like, what? I just, again, this is like how, almost 10 years ago now, um, but I just didn't understand. And I think a lot of young people also don't, probably wouldn't understand this. And like, maybe I was naive, maybe I should have known. Now it happens everywhere. You go to Target, you go to Nordstrom's, you go to Ross. At checkout, they're like, want to save 25% on your purchase today. And they don't even ever say credit card, but that's what it is. Um, and it's like, you're not even talking to a banker. You're not even talking to somebody that understands what this card is and what the, the terms and conditions of this card is, which kind of takes out like, at least when you go to a bank and you're talking to a banker and they're at least explaining they're like name dropping these things. They don't, even if you don't understand what it means, it just gives it more professionalism or like, you know, you're kind of like somewhat cautious to use the card, right? I'm, the, it's just an example, but this stuff happens all the time where people are getting f money, they're getting loans, they're getting finance, they're getting products um, or lines of credit or something you know, that's like easily accessible. This is actually how like the housing market crashed in like 2008 because they were giving out money loans that people couldn't actually afford to pay back. Um, and so that's what's happening to people is that they are 
borrowing money, they're using money that they don't have, and then they're falling into this trap of debt. And it is tied to consumerism in ways because we are just such spenders that we want, we don't think about it, we're just like, oh, swipe, swipe, uh, no pin number, just just buy it. And we they're, they're advertising it to, to us like that because they know that we are, um, we're targets, you know, like we're going to fall for these things. We're going to want it. And yeah, again, if you want to acquire wealth in your life, you need to learn how to properly manage your consumer um, habits and your debt because um, wealthy people do use debt to finance their lives, but the difference is they know how to properly manage it and they actually have the money to pay back what they're borrowing. So, um, how do I want to wrap this all up? Um, I, I did pull up a quote on my phone, which is, it's, or it's not a quote, excuse me. It's a, it's a definition of consumerism. So consumerism is the idea that increasing the consumption of goods and services purchased in the market is always a desirable goal and that people's well-being and happiness depend fundamentally on obtaining consumer goods and material possessions. So what does that mean? That means that this consumerism that we all live in, the idea is that the more that we acquire, that's the goal, how much we can purchase, how much money we make, it's based off of what we can purchase. These high, um, high value products, designer, um, and it's that's it's false. You know, the idea that those things are going to provide value and happiness for us is false. In fact, it actually makes you. It's like the chase, you know. Then it's like you start buying and buying and buying, and it's never fulfilling for you. Um, it's never going to make you happy Happy at the end of the day, or, or maybe at the end of the day it will, but at the end of the week it doesn't, at the end of the month it doesn't. Happiness comes from within. I feel like that's somewhat going off topic because I want to go back, but it's important. Like, you will you may experience that, that in some point in your life. Um, but I want to go back into debt because I mentioned that I worked at Wells Fargo and credit cards, loans, student loans, no matter what it is, when you're borrowing money, please be careful with what you are using it towards. Even if it's school, like I'm not saying don't go to school. I'm just saying that be careful with the money that you're borrowing to whatever you're spending it on. You don't always have to go and buy, you know, the most expensive car just because you can afford the minimum payment every month. There, um, going back to credit cards because that is like such an evil trap to fall into because it's so easy once you get the card, you get, you know, a thousand dollar spending limit, five thousand dollar spending limit. You use the year free of interest and then at the end of the year you have, you know, four thousand dollars on the card at 25 percent and you're 22 years old and you are only paying your minimum payment and then the interest is building on itself that means that you're only paying your minimum payment and you're accumulating interest at 25 percent so the interest that's accumulating is higher than the minimum payment that you're paying so you're not even knocking down any of like in fact, you're paying towards the card, even if you're not using it at this point, you're paying towards the card and the balance is just growing. You'll never get out of it and it's something that will not go away. So if you do have a high credit card balance and a high interest rate, my advice is to look into balance transfer offers. Like if you have another credit card or you can open one with a different bank that offers a balance transfer, that's a good option to take um what it usually is is it's usually a five percent transfer fee, fee so you'll pay like five percent of the balance with the minimum of like 25 dollars um up front and then after that they'll give you zero percent interest for like six months to a year sometimes a little more or less give or take i think it's usually about like a year eight months 12 um 14 months or something like that 
that's a good option because zero percent is not you know it means you're not going to be accumulating interest on the account as you pay it down and if you do have a high balance even if a balance transfer is not an option for you you need to focus on paying down your high debts and higher interest rates as soon as possible you need to start budgeting you need to maybe get a side gig and you need to make a plan to really knock down that high balance and aggressively pay it off because again it's something that won't go away it's a trap that so many people fall into and um it's it's just finance like life is only getting more expensive which makes it even harder um, but again, with my YouTube channel, I want to just spread awareness. I want to talk about things that make people think and help them and their future. Um, these are things I've learned over the years through personal experiences myself, um, through reading books, through podcasts, through YouTube. Um, so, you know, I hope to inspire other people. I hope to help them before they fall in the trap. If they've fallen into the trap, maybe, you know, help them refocus on solving that problem and focusing on it. So that's it for today with the consumer and debt, consumerism culture. Just be aware, be smart, and, you know, you don't have to have everything in order to, like, be perceived a certain way and what you have does not equal like who you are so that's it thanks guys